Now it's time to the last lecture in the chapter. Lecture number 9 of chapter 3 Electricity. The Logic Gates. We will know how the logic gates work. Then we will have some examples. And finally we will talk about signals in electricity. The first part of the lecture is what are logic gates. This picture shows what a logic gate looks like. They are circuits used as switches in computers and electronics. They give an output voltage, or you can say current, after processing one or two input voltages. We will study five main logic gates in our syllabus. Used to make circuits of conditions operation. The logic gate is made of transistors and resistors. How does a logic gate work? In this lecture, we can keep ourselves away from getting involved in the complications of electricity. We do not need to discuss how they electrically work. We just want to discuss how they logically work. This is a symbol of a logic gate. This logic gate is a circuit component that has two inputs and one output. This logic gate controls switching the lamp on and off. The logic gate will get two orders from the two inputs. The logic gate will think about the two inputs and then takes the decision according to the two inputs given and the type of the logic gate. This logic gate has two orders from the two inputs. One input orders to make the lamp on. The other orders to make the lamp off. The logic gate takes the two inputs. And finally it decides to give an output that makes the lamp off. This is just an example. Later we will know that this logic gate is named the AND logic gate. And we will study how it exactly works. Another logic gate of another type named OR. This logic gate will have the same orders. But this logic gate will decide differently to give an output that makes the lamp ON. Finally you can see that the logic gate is simply a circuit component that decides an output according to some inputs. The first logic gate is the AND gate. This is the symbol of the AND gate and you must know how to draw it. The AND gate cannot give an ON signal on the output unless input 1 and input 2 both give ON signals. Each logic gate has a truth table. A table that describes the signal given on the output with different cases of inputs. The first case is when both inputs are off. The output here will be off. If input 1 is off and input 2 is on, the output is off. Because this is an AND gate, so it cannot give an ON output unless input 1 and input 2 are both on. The third case is if input 1 is on and input 2 is off. Also, this will give off for the same reason. The fourth case is if input 1 is on and input 2 is on. So, this is the only case that gives an on output. The second logic gate is the OR. The OR gate will give an on output if input 1 or input 2 is on. The first case is if input 1 and 2 are both off. This will give an off output. If input 1 is off and input 2 is on, the output is on because it gives on if input 1 or input 2 is on. The third case is if input 1 is on and input 2 is off. This will give on for the same reason. The fourth case is if input 1 is on and input 2 is on. So this gives an on output. The next logic gate is named NAND. Or you can say not AND. It is the opposite of the AND gate. So you do not need to memorize what happens. 
You just need to know what happens with the AND gate, and the NAND will be the opposite. Since OFF and OFF gives an OFF output on the AND, so the NAND simply will give ON for the same case, and all the other cases will be the opposite. The fourth logic gate is given the name NOR, or you can say NOT OR. It is the opposite of the OR gate, so you do not need to memorize what happens here. All you need to know is what happens to the OR gate, and the NOR will be the opposite. Since OFF and OFF gives an OFF output on the OR gate, so the NOR gate will simply give ON for the same case, and all the other cases will be the opposite. The last logic gate is the NOT gate. It has an only one input and one output. Sometimes they call it a signal inverter. So if the input is off, the output will be on. If the input is on, the output will be off. An important note about the logic gate. Notes about logic gates. If this logic gate we see now controls the work of the bulb, the bulb cannot be directly connected to the output of the logic gate. The logic gate is not a power supply. The output voltage of the logic gate is too low to help a bulb or a motor to work. The output is only connected to a relay or an electronic switch, which is a part of another circuit with its own power supply. Here we will have two simple examples on the use of logic gates in alarms. The first alarm is the heat and light alarm. We need to construct a circuit using logic gates that gives an alarm when it is hot and bright. Before we do this, there is an important thing we need to know. There are many detectors or sensors that are used to detect external environmental factors. We may use a temperature sensor, light sensor, humidity sensor, sound sensor. There are lots of sensors that we can use. A temperature sensor is designed to give an on or one signal if the surround is hot. If the surround is cold, the sensor will give off or zero signal. A light sensor will give one if light intensity is high. If it is dark, it will give zero. A humidity sensor will give 1 if it's humid or wet, and 0 if the surround is dry. Also, a sound sensor gives 1 if it's loud, and 0 if the sound level is quiet. It's clear that to construct our alarm, we will need both a temperature sensor and a light sensor. Each one of them will be connected to one input of an AND logic gate. The output of the AND gate is fed to the bulb circuit, which is the alarm. If the surround is cold, the temperature sensor will give zero. Also, if it is dark, the light sensor will give zero. The AND gate will process the two input signals and give a zero output or off, so the bulb will not light. This means that if it is cold and dark, no alarm will be given. What if it is cool and bright? This means 0 and 1 on the inputs. Here the AND gate will give 0 or OFF and the bulb will not light and no alarm is given. So if it is cool and bright, also no alarm will be given. The third possibility is hot and dark. This means 1 and 0 on the inputs. This will give an output of 0 and the bulb will not light. What if it is hot and bright? This will give both inputs 1. So the output will be 1 or ON. And now the bulb will light, giving us an alarm. The logic table of this alarm circuit is. If temperature is low and light intensity is low, the bulb will be off. If low temperature and bright light, the bulb will be off. If high temperature and low intensity of light, the bulb will also be off. And finally, if temperature is high, 
and the light intensity is also high, the bulb will be on. The bulb will light only if it is hot and bright, otherwise the bulb is off. This is a heat and light sensor. Another example of alarm circuits using the temperature sensor and light sensor is the heat and dark alarm. We need an alarm if the temperature is high, but no light. The light sensor will be connected to a NOT gate. The temperature sensor is connected to one input of an AND gate. The light sensor followed by the NOT gate are connected to the other input of the AND logic gate. If it is cold and dark, the signals will be zero for both temperature and light sensors. The zero of the light sensor is inverted to one by the NOT logic gate. This makes the inputs of the AND gate 1 and 0. This will give an OFF output according to the truth table of the AND gate. The second case is cold and bright. This means 0 and 1. But the 1 of the light sensor is inverted to 0 by the NOT gate. This makes the inputs on the AND gate 0 and 0. This gives an OFF output. The third case is hot and dark. This means 1 for the temperature sensor and 0 for the light sensor. This 0 is inverted to 1, making the inputs of the AND gate 1 and 1. This gives an output of 1, making the bulb on, and this is the alarm. Finally, hot and bright. This means 1 and 1, but the 1 of the light sensor is inverted as usual to 0. So the inputs of the AND gate will be 1 and 0. This will give an output of 0 and the bulb will not light. From the previous four possibilities you can see that the bulb will light only if it is hot and dark. Otherwise the bulb is off. The last part in the lecture is the signals. Before we talk about signals, we have to know that electricity is used in two purposes. The most common and the well known for the public is a source of energy and power, like electricity in your home. The second use is transferring data and information. In both of them, the word signal refers to voltage. Example on transferring data are telephone, radio and television, internet, some electronics, and other uses. In both uses, the word signal refers to a voltage. The difference is that the voltage in energy and power use will be high. But in the purposes of transferring data, the signal is used to be of very low voltage, sometimes in millivolts or even smaller. The signal or the voltage in both purposes can be either analog or digital. The analog signals are signals that vary continuously with time between maximum and minimum. Digital signals are those signals that have only discrete values, high and low. These are some graphical representations of analog signals showing the smooth change in voltage with time. This graph also is a graphical representation of the digital signal. It shows the sudden change of the voltage from high to low. No smooth transition. Examples on things that can produce an analog signal or work on analog signals and voltages are analog meters like the normal pointer ammeter and voltmeters. Also, the variable resistor can cause the voltage and current to change smoothly in a circuit. Examples of things that can produce a digital signal or work on digital signals are The simple example is the switch. The switch connected to a DC power supply causes the current to be either on or off. There is no smooth change between the on and the off. Other examples Digital meters like digital ammeters and voltmeters the digital thermometers, the CD players, and telecommunication. If we consider an analog signal like the signal shown, after transmitting to a long distance, 
This will be how the signal looks like, distorted and weakened. If we try to amplify this signal and reproduce it, this will be what the signal looks like. The distortion will also be amplified. But let's see a digital signal after being transmitted to a long distance. This will be how it looks like, distorted and weakened. If we try to amplify and purify it, it will be like the original one and no distortion is seen. This makes some advantage of digital signals over analog signals. Clearer, can be reproduced or regenerated, less prone to interference, carries more data, easily repaired, easily processed and can deal with computers. These are the differences between the two types of the signals, analog and digital. So the short lesson logic gates is divided into three parts. Number one, logic gates. Number two, examples. Number three, the signals.